Hey! Hello everyone and welcome to a new walkthrough. I've been working on this for a while, a lot of technical issues going on. <laughs> so I was doing all sorts of random videos in the meantime. This is a game that was never released outside of Japan, known as Pokemon Card GB2, Invasion of Team Great Rocket. Well, it's a sequel to the first Pokemon trading card game. So you're thinking like, oh, is this gonna be in... Japanese the whole way? No. You see, there's a fan translation patch by a couple of fans, and they translated the entire game into English, which makes it easy to play without having to use any sort of side uh, translation guide to play it along the way or anything like that, so... Yeah! <laughs> so, as you can see, based on the flashing pictures on the screen there, is that there is quite a bit more color to these cards than in the original. That's because it's more enhanced for the Game Boy Color than the first one was. So it looks even better than the first one as well. There's also more cards, and some of the cards have never came outside of Japan either to any other place in the world, so that'll be a new experience to play with as well. So anyway, we should probably get into this bad boy, because I've I've worked on this long enough. <laughs> so start button, let's go, new game. You can choose between a boy and a girl this time, yeah! But only before you could choose as Mark, that was all you had. But now we have a girl, so I think we're gonna play as the girl. And if you just press the start button here, uh, and well, like if you just go with done, basically, not just the start button, the start button will skip you over to the corner. If you just hit done when there's nothing in there, you'll find out that her name is Mint, and that is the name that we are going to be using here. Of course, my name is PK Gam, and I'll be doing the commentary and whatnot as usual, but. Details! Details. Let's play. Mint loves collecting Pokemon cards! Me too. Mint came to this island seeking the legendary Pokemon cards. Ooh. Eight Club Masters guarded the way to the Grandmasters, and the four Grandmasters protected the legendary cards. After many card duels, Mint beat the Grandmasters! The four legendary cards are finally inherited by a new master duelist, known as Mint. Yeah, there's a little, little typo there, but anyway. <laughs> then one day, something terrible had happened. Oh no! Invasion of Team Great Rocket! <laughs> so silly, look at that thing. <laughs> Sucking off the cards like a UFO. Oh no! A mysterious group suddenly attacked, and they called themselves Team Great Rocket, or Team GR. Team GR attacked the island's card clubs and stole all of their cards! Oh man, it's just like the rare hunters from Yu-Gi-Oh! And no 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 My collection! It's gone! No! All the cards I collected! No! Just... Okay, I gotta collect myself. Even Mint's cards are stolen! He must notify Dr. Mason about these Pokemon card thieves! Let's go to Dr. Mason's lab immediately. Alright, so after I stop being dizzy, we take a little trip over to Mason Laboratory and... Ronald is here! Remember him from the first game? He's your rival guy. Whoa! If it isn't Mint! Remember me? I'm your longtime rival, Ronald! Mint, do you have any Pokemon cards on you? Oh! Team Great Rocket sold them? I better check them out to stay one step ahead of you. By the way, I think Dr. Mason wants to speak with you. Well then, see ya, Mint! Okay, and he butts me out of the side. Like the rival from Gold and Silver. Okay, oh, uh, uh, thank heavens! You're safe, Mint! It's awful! A goof called Team Great Rocket! Or Team GR Invade! His island's card clubs are attacked one by one! Everybody's cards are stolen and many club members are kidnapped! Oh jeez, this is like multi-crimes going on with these peeps. Team GR stole the legendary Pokemon cards from the Grandmasters too! 
Please help us get the cards back from those villains. Will you accept Dr. Mason's request? No. I beg you, man. We need your help. Rattle can't do it alone. Please, man. No. Okay, it's the same dialogue. <laughs> Alright, yes, I, I must. I gotta get my cards back after all. Thank you, Mint. Since he took your cards, you'll need a replacement deck. That way you can use your deck to battle with others. Here, take this deck. Luckily, it wasn't stolen by Team GR. A starter deck is mine! But that's... Not gonna replace my full card collection. You can have this mini computer as well. You received a minicom. That mini computer is a handy tool that helps organize your cards. It can list your card collection, check mail, and even record decks. All recorded decks are sent to our lab's deck re record machines too. I'm counting on you to get everyone's cards back, Mint. Okay, and we're up! You can move with the D-pad. Press and hold the B button to run. And a button to talk to people. If you'd like to save your game, first press the start button and choose diary from the menu and select yes. Yes, it's like the tutorial area of sorts. You'll be able to return to the game the last place to save. You save your game often. The room to the right holds the lab's computers and deck machines, which are kind of useless to us right now. <laughs> These include our deck record and automatic deck machines. The automatic deck machines are for players who have some experience. If you're looking for training, try the room on the left. We're gonna go through that. This is pretty fun training. Dr. Mason created for players new to the Pokemon trading card game. You ought to try it out at least once, though. Exclamation point. I did not say that very expressively. <laughs> when you win card duels, you'll be rewarded with booster packs. Each booster pack has 10 cards. The cards you can receive depend on the type of booster pack. Each booster pack will contain random cards from a series, just like regular booster packs in real life. Except the booster packs we'll see in the game are, well, kind of a mixed bag of stuff from various sets and stuff. Y you'll see. <laughs> Since Team GR took all of your cards, you'll have to get new ones. If you don't win duels, you'll never rebuild your collection. Well, that's, uh, well, uh... They could just give cards, I mean, I believe <laughs> there are eight different card clubs on this island. Fighting Water, Lightning Grass, Psychic Fire, Rock and Science! The, uh, the Rock and Science ones are Fighting and Grass. Um, I I'll get into that when we get there. <laughs> However, they seem to be closed due to Team GR's attacks. Oh man, I'll show you the right side even though, as I said, it's useless to me, but... This automatic deck machine works wonders. When you have all the cards you need to make a deck, this machine will automatically create the deck for you. The more points you defeat, the more decks the machine can build. Man, if only I had cards! <laughs> Come visit it after dueling some new opponents. So you can take a look at automatic deck machine number one. And starter decks. Why, hello there. As you can see, well, this is the only one that we can build. <laughs> The rest of them you can only kind of like look at, so I'm just gonna kind of, kind of, kind of, yeah. Our deck, you can actually pause with the start button, check your deck, view a deck, and you might want to actually take a look through your cards here to uh, kind of strategize and whatnot, but I'm actually not going to be using this particular deck in this part. You'll see why in a minute here. <laughs> Anyway, Team Great Rockets seems to have come from another island. They supposedly use cards that even we have not seen before. I wonder where on earth they've come from. Hmm. Hey Mint, did you know? Dr. Mason invented the automatic deck building machine! Even if you don't have all the cards needed, it will build a deck. Missing cards will be replaced by others in your collection. However, you must have enough cards available to make a full deck. So yeah, you don't you still can't. I mean I only have the cards in my deck right now, so I'm just kinda giving you a tour. Hey Mint, this device is our deck record machine. It saves records for any decks that you have made yourself. Once recorded, a deck can be rebuilt at any time you like, even if some cards are being used by another deck you currently have. It's also linked to your mini-com, so it can be used whenever you like. So yeah, this dealio here, you can, yeah, swap around your deckers, and well, we don't have any more decks! <laughs> this is a deck record machine. I'll show you how to use it though, just go like that. Select it, save a deck, choose your deck, there you go. And we are 
gonna have a good time using up that slot for no reason because it's already saved in that side. Alright, we got 60 decks that we can use. Now this guy here, long time no see, Mint. It's me, Tech Sam. Have I practiced duel with Sam? Sure! Dr. Mason, please come over here. We be we're beginning a practice duel. Woo! First, review some basic information on the card game with Sam. Alright, Mint, what would you like to learn about? Oh, jeez. No. I'd really rather not go through all this. <laughs> I, I just kind of want to go to the duel. Yeah, yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Because I'll, I'll be teaching this in the walkthrough anyway, so, yeah. Once you're familiar with the lesson, you could try it on your own. Let's begin using this deck for practice! Since it's just better practice, try to remember the process step by step. As you play the duel, I'll give you advice on what to do next. This is also where they teach you anyway, so... Meh. Please follow my instructions exactly for this card battle. I'll write them down for you to read and memorize before each turn. If you're ready to play, let's start the card battle! Didn't you really give me an option, did they? I'm ready anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's practice deck, and don't shuffle anything. No, stop. Don't, no, bad, bad. This is they're teaching. Don't stop. Don't stop. To, no, no, don't shuffle. Okay. Each player will draw seven cards. That's how all games start. And if you have a basic Pokemon, you can plop her right in the arena. And it appears we have two, or at least we can see on the page. See those green diamond dealios? Well, it's actually a green square with a white diamond and a circly thing in the middle. But yeah, those are basic Pokemon. And we gotta use either Diglett or Pidgey, just as stated. Okay, so it looks like we gotta choose that Diglett. Okie dokie. And next you can fill the bench with up to five basic Pokemon. Bench Pokemon cannot attack, but they may prepare for future battles. Pidgey on the bench. Let's go. And B button to continue. I shall. <laughs> Nothing else we can do, really. We're placing two prizes for this. It's usually four in the game, unless it's a big duel, which is a six, and that's like a full regular type game. But there's also two and three prize duels. But anyway, a coin will be tossed and decide who plays first. Guess who's gonna be playing first? It's always me. <laughs> it's, this coin is rigged with a magnet or something. And yes, that is a chancy coin that you see in the actual Pokemon trading card game that you get with starter decks and stuff like that, so a little extra dealio to that, and ooh, fighting energy! We need the energy cards to attack! Different attacks use different types of amounts of energy! From the hand menu, select the fighting energy card to use to draft your Pokemon Diglett and press the A button, and the fighting energy card will be attached! And that's pretty much it for the energy dealio. But you can also, if you want to see just a, like a little bit of extra information, you can check your play area like that. And then you can check your cards like this. Like you see, Dig on the left side requires one fighting energy. Mud Slap requires two fighting energy. Yeah, it's just just a little little bit of extraness to show you here. And we got that fighting energy on, and we are ready to dig. Like that. That was kind of pathetic. It's got 60 HP. I only did 10 damage. I don't think we're gonna make it. <laughs> Sam's turn, and it can horn attack pretty easily here. Well, headbutt. It's close enough, because it's got the horn, you know. <laughs> you get what I mean. Yeah, we got the card. We got a neat arena. And the Diglett's other attack requires two energy cards. Oh, no. Well, no, no, no. It looks like we can finally use that now. See, you can only attach one energy card per turn. So... Now we can kind of increase our damage output a smidge here. So let's go ahead and mud slap it up. Yes! Yes! Now we're catching up. Because it's only can do one damage counter of damage, which is 10 damage per turn. Oh, oh no, 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 no! Disaster has struck. We are now behind again. Now what are we gonna do? There's gotta be something we can do. Something. Well, I'm sure they'll walk us through it. <laughs> Alright, let's draw a card. We got a grass energy. If we leave Diglett as it is, it'll be knocked on next turn. Yep, just as I've been saying. You can play the Doug Trio card in your hand onto Diglett to evolve it. <gasps> Why didn't I think of this? Well, 
I did because I played it before. But anyway, <laughs> the one evolves HP goes up from 30 to 70. There won't be enough energy on Doug Trio to use any of his attacks. Place another energy card on Doug Trio, so you can attack this turn. No, you can attack on Doug Trio, but you get slush attack. The slush attack will knock out Seal, letting her draw a prize card. All right, so we go over, grab that Doug Trio, plop that on there. You can't evolve Pokemon on the first turn that you play them, so that's part of why you just didn't evolve Doug Trio right away. The other reason you, I mean, I could have evolved Doug Trio last turn, but the game wouldn't let me tutorials and all like that. But partly why it didn't want me to, just sort of like a subtle way to teach you here, is because the slash attack requires three energy cards, you can only attach one per turn. So if I would have evolved it on turn two, I wouldn't have been able to attack with Mud Slap, and it wouldn't have done as much damage total in the end. So, yeah. <laughs> Strategy 101. But anyway, let's go ahead, plop that on there, and slash that seal for the KO, and no matter which prize card you choose, you're gonna get yourself an energy card of, of a certain variety, <laughs> so that's okay, we'll be able to make do with that since everything is all set up to be played just as it is. Remember, no shuffling! No shuffling. Bad. Bad. So anyway, seeking use the waterfall, oh no 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 no, it's gonna be super effective! Wait, no. Wait, why not? Why, why, was, why was that not super effective? Water versus ground, well, that's just the way that the Pokemon trading card game works. The the typing is kind of like combined into multiples. Ground, rock, fighting types are all grouped in the fighting type variety here. And in the case of the ground and rock types, you've got Dugtrio here is weak against grass rather than water or water plus grass. You get, yeah, so they only have one weakness, basically, and in the case of the trio, it's just grass, so... We'll, we'll get more into that. <laughs> I can actually show you, well, um, when a Pokemon is knocked out, another must be placed in the arena. Let the basic Pokemon Nidoran male on your bench to prepare it for battle. Attach your grass energy to Nidoran male to so prepare for battle later, or planning ahead. Finally attack with Dug Trio one last time before it is knocked out. Now you try doing that. Okay, now, um... You actually, well, sort of, if you wanted to. Uh, well... Well, not now, because it's tutorial time, but if you were t to notice here, um, Slash, you got an Earthquake attack, which is just 70. Um, it does tend to eat your own bit, but... No, no, this is so weird. Seeking has 70 HP. Now, why... why wouldn't you just... Oh, wait, actually, no. Oh, that's right! Oh, I never thought of that before, actually. That... I... second. Another look at this gave me the idea. <laughs> yeah, because, um... The Earthquake requires four fighting energy in specific, not three fighting and one colorless. Oh, that's my bad, and my bad. <laughs> so, yeah, I gotta get that set up for the male Nidoran. And attack. Alright, and then we do a slash. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> Just a thing out that they're, they're sort of kind of teaching you things as you go. In that the... It, it, like, through observance, like if you looked at Doug Trio's card before, you'd think, oh yeah, it's got 50... I mean, I, I, if you have 4 energy, you could do 70 damage, but... But wait, if I attach an energy, that won't work, will it? Well, at least it won't let me do it anyway. <laughs> So it's kind of like teaching you through that, and yeah. Anyway, Doug Trio is knocked out. And now we shall go over to guess who? Knocked out active Pokemon must be placed by a Pokemon on the bench. The Pokemon currently on your bench are Pidgey and Nidoran. Choose Nidoran male to put in the active and arena as your active Pokemon. You may press the select button at this time to look in the play area. Look at the play area. It's important to keep track of your hand and what's in play. Now you try doing this. Boink. Yes, I've already showed you the play area thing, which is handy to keep and keep track of and whatnot, as I was showing. So, ooh, map chop is a pretty good basic. Remember to place any basic point right. Well, I, I, I don't, I don't want to say all of them. Let's let's put it that way, because sometimes you want to keep a space open for other stuff that you might want to put down later, and if you fill it up, you're, you're kind of stuck. <laughs> so, 
Anyway, put the match up, you just loot you on your bench first. Neater and male can evolve in the Neaterino, but don't play that card just yet. Neaterino requires more energy to use one of its attacks. For now, I'll leave Neater and male as it is, and attach grass energy. This is the uh, additional, remember the Diglett Mud Slap thing that I explained earlier? Now let's go and get the further detail on that strategy. Alright, we're gonna try that. Oh. We have some glitch in the text. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's emulation after all. We're gonna go plop that over there, and we're also gonna plop that Machop on the bench, and we're gonna try attacking with Horn Hazard. If I get a heads, it'll work. If it goes tails, it fails. So ready, steady! <sighs> That'll always happen. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, in his turn, he plops a star you on the bench. Now, remember, you can always check the opponent's play area via that play area thing on the... Uh, yeah. And also, there's a shortcut by holding B and then pressing up. I just showed you that a little bit ago. I didn't actually explain it, but yeah. And anyway, one card. Always at the start of your turn. Time to evolve Nidoran and mail into Nidorino! Heck yeah, baby! You need enough energy to use one of its attacks. You can also um, check the cards in your hand ahead of time if you don't have them all memorized by just taking a look-see at your hand and then checking each individual card. So hopefully we can knock out that Seeking and we're, gonna, we're having glitchy text. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that happening my first lead through, but anyway. So, whoops, I, I wasn't going to show you here. If you go down the check instead, and then you can see the energy. Colorless energy can use any sort of energy card, basically. So I could actually use fighting energy to fill those colorless energy stars that you see next to the leaf there. Uh, anyway, so Orange Drill also got the uh, 50, but I don't have enough energy for that. Oops. We're gonna go plop that on there, and hopefully, we can knock out that Seeking. Do you think we can do it? Do you think we can do it? Heads! Heads! Yeah! Okay, it's, it's scripted. <laughs> Victory is mine! Because once you take your last prize card, you win the game. And of course, not the grass energy. <laughs> Alright, so enough messing around with that tutorial and feigning ignorance as to the cards that I've completely memorized, basically, from the base sets. Because I've, I, I played the original game to death, so... So, did you understand and remember everything from the battle? Keep in mind that those exact steps are only good for a practice duel. Don't be afraid to try new things in actual card battles. Would you like to try an actual game now, or would you rather play the practice duel again? No practice duel. Alright. So now what you can actually do is, uh, understand. You're welcome at any time. All these available for practice battle if you're so inclined. So, well, I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> so now what you could, what you could do is just do a regular duel. But the thing about it is, uh, it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> there will be no advice this time. We'll have only two prize cards. So, watch, it's, it's not gonna shuffle or anything like that, and we're just gonna go... I mean, it, it, it's literally the same thing that we played before, only it's, it's like the test of all the stuff you learn. I'm not gonna show that, I'm just gonna show you the result. <laughs> Wait a second. Uh... He was supposed to evolve Goldeen in Seeking... Because that would have increased the HP... What? Ah, uh, Is he going easy on me this time? Because this is... Victory! <laughs> okay, so maybe it's not quite the same. It, 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 was, it was exactly the same up to that point, so... Well... <laughs> uh, yeah... We, I know he got seeking in his hands, like, I don't, I don't know. Alright, so... Here's the result. <laughs> you have a good memory, don't you? 
I do. I remember you evolved into seeking. <laughs> booster pack this time. It's the present booster pack, but this one only has energy cards in it. So, if you need energy cards for some reason, you probably never will. I don't think you, you can go here and do stuff. <laughs> just rebattle him in a regular duel. Not the practice tutorial duel, just a regular duel. You still won't shuffle the deck, but you can win every time just by following the same thing. Alright, so now we're gonna go and do some stuff for realties here. If you take a look, see around this place, there's four tables. And we're gonna do some stuff. This training room was recently built for Dr. Mason's pupils. Please feel free to practice duels here whenever you like. There are several steps in our training program for you to try. Yep. Woohoo! Yeah! Ah, so you've come, Nate. How do you like our new training room? It was built to help tutor players of the Pokemon trading card game. You can start your training at step one. You must start with step one first. Would you like to try it? Yeah, sure. So, this is actually a real deal duel. <laughs> We're gonna be using the, the pre-made decks that they're giving us. But it's a real deal duel. First, let's learn a little more about Pokemon card evolution. To begin, basic Pokemon may evolve into stage 1 forms. In turn, those stage 1 forms may evolve into stage 2 forms. Since we're only training, put your normal deck away. <laughs> See? We're still not, still not playing the deck that you can check. We'll use the Labs practice decks for this duel. Let's start a duel using four prize cards. Aaron, step one deck. And we shall not shuffle. Yeah, it's, it's, it's well, I mean, it's... It's not, I mean, yeah, it is scripted in the same way as you get the same cards every time, but you still have to think your way through this. So this is still a real deal duel. So you got your Dratini, you can check that, it's got a 10 point pound attack, you got your Goldie, and you got your Seeking. So what should we do? Like, hmm, you know that Seeking is probably more useful than the Dratini this early on. So should we? Put the Goldeen first and prepare it? I think so. Um, yeah, this is kind of like the basic tutorial on said evolutions and whatnot. Because, you know, that's what he said at the beginning there. Since we already used the Goldeen Seeking thing from the other area, that's the kind of the, the intro, I guess you could say, to said uh, evolutions before we get over to this, which is a little bit more advanced. And by the way, you might notice the card backs a little bit different. That's because the Japanese cards use a different card back than other countries, so that's why you see that particular card back rather than the usual dual-sided uh, Pokeball thing. But anyway, coin toss, let's go! Okay. <laughs> so I'll be able to horn attack pretty easily. And let's get that water all set up. By the way, um, Hitmonchan is a really really overpowered basic Pokemon. <laughs> just, just, uh, one energy for 20 damage, three for 40, but the thing about it is that it's also got 70 HP, so this is like boss time <laughs> already. And if you'd like to, you can also check the Bulbasaur. What, 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 what kind of Bulbasaur is this, you might be asking? Well, I'm glad you asked. See that symbol on the side there? That is a part of the Bulbasaur deck. There's also a Squirtle deck, and both of those decks are a half decks from a set known as the Intro Pack, which is like a beginner sets for people to uh, get cards to play with immediately, but there's some exclusive cards in there that were never brought over to other countries, and this is one of them. You got Tackle, any kind of energy, Razor Leaf, 30, two of the grassy variety. Got it? Good. But anyway, go and attack! Go! I'm gonna lose the hit by Chan, aren't I? Okay, no, it's not possible. As long as you play your cards right. Literally. <laughs> Alright, jab for 20, see? Uh, it's, that's, that's part of the thing uh, about Hitmonchan, is that one energy, 20 damage attacks are pretty powerful in general. As I mentioned, Machop's pretty good. You, you'll... Uh, I'll, I'll get into deck building more later. Charmeleon evolves from Charmander, but we kind of don't have one right now, so let's go ahead and evolve that. But wait, but wait, did you forget? To add a water energy? I did not. Man, what, that would have been embarrassing if I actually clicked the head when I was messing around. <laughs> Alright, waterfall attack. 
now we're gonna get enough leeway on Hitmonchan, because it's gonna do 30, it's got 60 HP left, it can only do 20, and while well, only is a understatement, it's good for the early game, <laughs> and it's just, just steady, steady damage. And Spiro time! Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh shoot. This is not looking good. This is not looking good. By the way, you'll, you'll probably recognize these characters from the first Pokemon trading card game. There's recurring characters in here, as this is the same island from before, so... Well... You, 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 you'll meet more later, basically, but I, I, I don't want to, like, spoil who all these characters are and stuff like that, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I'm just gonna treat the game as if it's, like, a whole new experience, basically. Anyway! So... As you know, with Seeking... We already maxed out on the energy, so we don't really have to go and give it any more energy. So, we can start powering up other critters if we so desire. Like, say, using the water energy, uh, Dratini? And going ahead with the waterfall. That potion he used just kind of stalled it out more than anything, it just gave him an extra turn, because he can still only really do the 20 damage unless he attaches another fighting energy. And he doesn't. <laughs> so, he can only do the jab. Yeah, and that's kind of kind of the whole thing of the scripted thing, is he doesn't really have the fighting energy to pull that off. So, you just kind of go ahead and attack as you would normally. Anyway, I'm, I think... I think... Uh, I don't remember if I get Dragonair. Uh, but let's assume that I am. <laughs> Let's give that the Dratini and Waterfall. But yeah, Dragonair has a lot of high energy attacks. One of them is really good. A Hyper Beam that knocks off an energy card from the opponent's Pokémon, but that's, uh, that's another card we're talking <laughs> Sure enough, energy card for the prize, so... It's like, it's like almost planned that way. <laughs> Alright, Spiro is a go, and this is not looking good! By the way, what kind of Spiro is this, you might be asking? <laughs> Because you probably have never seen this sort of Spiro before. Well, I, <laughs> I think you know where this is going. Anyway, I need to put something into the arena. I'm forced to play Dratini because it's the only thing I've got. But wait until you see what they give me. Oh, it's a Charmander! How convenient! <laughs> so we're gonna go that, put that on the bench, begin the powering up, and I'm gonna show you really quick that Spearow here. There is the Squirtle, not the Bulbasaur, so that's a part of another intro deck. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Peck, wing attack, 10-20, very simple stuff. And we attack! Because we can't really do anything else. We already attached our one energy card for the turn, so we just attack. And we attack some more, and we keep attacking. Basically, when you attack, it ends your turn instantly, so... Alright, two cards from the deck. Much up, oh no, on the bench. <laughs> this is boss time already! <laughs> Peck, and end that turn, baby. So, our plan here is to kind of just keep Dratini out. Oh, oh Bill. Keep Dratini out, power up Charmander into Charmeleon, give it some energy cards, and why I like Bill is because it lets me draw two cards. It's the pot of greed of Pokemon. <laughs> cards are power. Power is a victory! <laughs> I was overly dramatic, wasn't I? Anyway, Rattata on the bench. Energy card attached, pound attack is a go. Leg has an itch. <laughs> itch has been scratched. Opponent's turn. I'm not too concerned if he knocks all the Dratini because it's not gonna give a Dragonair. Well, well, I'd much rather use the Charmeleon. You know, you know, so I guess I'll let it get knocked out and then I'll have a I'll have a free switch over to Charmeleon. Bill returns! Yes! I did it again. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Professor Oak. 
The most powerful trainer card in the game. You discard your entire hand and draw seven cards. But first, let's put the star you on the bench. Um, plop, fire energy, uh, and charmeleon. Let's try and basically empty out our hand before we play Professor Oak. So evolve Rattata into Raticate. Um, Rattata has a, a fang attack which does 20 damage, but also Raticate also has the same attack. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, uh, yeah, the, the bite attack, not, not fang attack, I don't, I don't know why I say fang, but, uh, well, super fang is one of the things that might be subconsciously, but yeah, bite 20, same thing with Rattata, only Rattata has 30 HP, so I might as well evolve it into Raticate right away because it uses the same energy. So, there we go. Anyway, let's go ahead and pound. I'll see if I can use that water energy on um, next turn to exhaust everything in my hand before I draw seven cards. <laughs> Which is probably one of the most broken cards ever made in Pokemon. And... Dratini is a goner. It has been KO'd. That's okay, though. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. And now... It's Doom Time. <laughs> so really, if you don't know its attacks, it's got a Slash for 30 and a Flamethrower for 50, but you have to discard one Fire Energy to use its Flamethrower attack. And it appears as if we might, uh... Might be just using that Professor Oak for the sake of refilling our Fire Reserves. But for now, we can actually just do a Slash attack and save the fire energy for discard later. I got too much energy on Charmeleon technically for its attacks, but since it has the discards that I described, you know, you, it's kind of nice to have that because you already are ahead a turn basically for the discards later. Planning 101 basically. And Machop is gonna be attacking for the 20. Of a steady. So notice it's got 50 HP, so instead of using the slash attack <clears throat> like I used uh, for the last time, just because Spiro had 30 or under HP, in this case it had 10 HP, I just went for the slash rather than waste an energy card on the flamethrower. So, wow, it's just, it's just throwing energy left and right at me. <laughs> you know what? Um, I might as well. And, you know what? I'm just gonna. I might as well see what's coming up ahead. <laughs> so he discarded those two energy cards. We're probably gonna get more energy cards out of this. Just, just saying, probably. Oh, oh, this is. Yeah, this is the power of Professor Oak here. <laughs> and since it's got 50 HP, as I was saying, blame thrower time. One to discard and say bye bye to Machop. Oh no! I think we're gonna sweep this for the win. <laughs> <laughs> Ivysaur, what the? What kind of Ivysaur <laughs> is this you might be asking? Yep, it's from another series you've probably not seen before, unless you follow the trading card game uh, across countries, like uh, checking into sets from other countries and stuff like that, so I'll give you a, a little look-see at that Ivysaur, but that Ivysaur is not gonna last very long. <laughs> You'll see why here. Um, get this one card, fire energy. <laughs> I don't even need to add, attach another energy, but just for the fun of it, I guess I will go Goldeen. And then I will go Seeking. And also, I mean, you already seen Goldeen and Seeking before, but I'm also going to show you um, Ponyta here. Kick, two of any kind of energy, Flame Tail, 30. Both are kind of underwhelming, except for Flame Tail in a way. Uh, because it's 2 for 30, but the 2 fire energy rather than a fire and a colorless, so you have to have specific energy. And then, we are, oops, no, 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 no. I want to go and give it a little bit of evolutionary love. And we shall check by pressing and holding B, and then pressing down to go to our play area. Stop, flip the coin of heads, 20 plus 10 if you get heads. If tails just does 20, eh, iffy. But this agility attack. You can stop all damage and anything on your next turn. That's not too shabby. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you here is, you know how Charmeleon is a fire type? See that type at the upper right corner there? Well, you, you might see that uh, Ivysaur there is a grass type. Its weakness is fire. <laughs> 
And yeah, you see it's got the Bulbasaur symbol there. That's a part of that intro pack thing. Leech Seed, if you do damage, remove one damage counter from Ivysaur, or 10 damage. Just a little quick translation, I guess you could say. Vine Whip, 40 for two leaf, well, two grass, and one colorless. And yeah, so anyway. So uh, when a Pokemon is weak against your attacks, it will do a double of damage. <laughs> bye bye, Ivysaur! For 100 damage. <laughs> and victory is mine in the beginner's tutorial duel of sorts. <sighs> But you know, there's other tables here, so... Very good, Mint. You cleared step one! Present booster pack! What do we get for the present booster pack? Well... <laughs> more energy cards! <laughs> Ooh, next stage is even more challenging! Come back for more training whenever you're ready! Woohoo! And that I will do in the next part, because I went through most of the tutorial stuff here in the first part. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy! And I will see you in the next part when we continue our card journey to get our cards back. Even though we kind of already have cards already, and you see that other players already have cards. I we, we gotta save the world with cards. Somehow. I, I, I'm not sure how it works either.